Hello and welcome to Bike Channel Kenya. And today we are looking at the debate of shaft drives versus chain drives. You know, the other day I was just riding around with my mate. I was on a Bimo R1200 and he was on a Jixa 1000. And to my amazement, everywhere we went, guys would come around and immediately conclude that my bike was the quickest between the two simply because it had a shaft drive. And that got me thinking. How much do people really know about shaft drives? Before we even go to the shaft drives, let's first look at the chain drives. Most, if not all of you watching this video, know how a chain drive works. Basically, a sprocket is attached to the front to transmit the power the engine is producing and send it via a chain to the rear sprocket, which in turn turns the rear wheel and you get motion, which takes you from place A to B as simple as that now let's look at the pros and cons pros one easy design to manufacture and produce making it very cheap hence why it is very popular number two it is very light hence why it is used on racing bikes lastly it is very easy to find chains in your local area buy and even change with minimum mechanical knowledge cons the first one is you have to lube your chain every time you wash your bike. And if you are frank, most of us forget that bit, which makes the chain wear out at a faster rate than it would. Two, if you commute daily with your bike, and or if you are a weekend warrior, you will end up replacing the drive set, that is the chain and both sprockets annually. Which here in Kenya, a set will relieve you 15 to 20,000 Kenya shillings, depending on the CC, and the size of the chain, a 420, a 520, a 530, and so on. Not only that, but there are some people who I like to call distance warriors who go through two sets every year, which means around 40,000 Kenyan shillings on two sets of chain stocks broken alone. So when you are upgrading to that big bike, these are the some of the costs you should keep in mind. Three, this one you will mostly notice it during the rainy seasons, and that is the chain will be in a bad state to look at. Some will look so bad that you might need to visit your optician for a minor surgery <laughs> once you look at some of the chains during the rainy seasons. Anyway, now let's come to the shaft drive, and I don't want to bore you with the technical terms of how it works. Now, instead of the sprockets, it has gears, like you'll find in a car's differential. And instead of a chain, it has a shaft. So a gear replaces the sprockets, and a shaft replaces the chain. As simple as that. Let's look at the pros. Well, after cleaning your bike, you won't have to worry about lubing anything. Actually, you won't have to worry about anything in terms of bad weather or water since the shaft is hidden away. The only thing you have to worry about, and that is almost after 15 to 20,000 kilometers, is changing the oil in the shaft. And it is just a mere 100 to 200 milliliters, depending on the bike. Two, changing your sprockets annually will be a thing of the past now, as the shaft will go on as long as the bike is rideable and that might come handy when you're on an adventure in the desert and your chain gives way with the shaft you won't have to worry about such worries that's why you see most adventure bikes have shaft drives three if your self-esteem is tied to how people think highly of you or how many likes you get on the ground well then a shaft drive will send your self-esteem levels to the roof well, at least here in Kenya, people will admire your bike more. Now, let's come to the cons. One, it is very heavy compared to a chain drive. A typical chain drive will weigh 3 to 5 kgs, depending on the metal type used. A shaft drive will typically weigh between 10 to 15 kgs, hence why they aren't used on race bikes. You know, you will think a shaft drive is faster than a chain drive, but like I just told you, no, they are very heavy and they lose a lot of power. Two, sophisticated design for a bike which makes it very expensive to produce, hence why it is found on high-end bikes only. Three, if it ever gives up on you, which is known to happen, but in a very rare case, like one in a million, getting a replacement will be very expensive, and let's even say you have the money. 
getting the part itself will be a challenge since there aren't many out there like there are chains but again this is a very very rare case that you will need a replacement so next time you see a bike with a shaft drive it doesn't mean it is faster than its chain driven counterparts that's it for this video hit the subscribe button for more videos like this see you on the next one ciao